Today's saint, children, lived about 200 years after yesterday's saint. There is a lot in common with them in a way. They were both noblemen. Back then in the Middle Ages, you didn't get anywhere, literally, unless you were of the nobility. Otherwise, you'd be pretty much of a serf and you'd stay put. Well, he went to this school, and you had to be of the nobility to go to school, too. He went to school, and um, amongst Latin and uh, uh, rhetoric and things like that, he learned as well fencing. Except only back then they called it dueling, because it was meant to be practical, in case you had an enemy you had to deal with. That's the case we had yesterday, right? With St. Romuald's father. And that got St. Romuald started on becoming a saint eventually. Well, he was a nobleman. You wouldn't remember the sermon that I gave the last time about, well, it was over a week ago. We don't generally remember sermons, and that's okay, as long as you get a holy thought or two, or maybe learn something at the time. Well, I was talking about the nobility, and how to be noble, most of all means, you have responsibilities. And you don't think of yourself. You never put yourself first. And that's the story of today's saint. St. John of Matha. After his school, he went to southern France, Well, then he went to the University of Paris, and he was a pious young man, and the bishop had pitched on him to be sort of a chaplain for the students at the university to work with the young people, which is always a good thing to do. Well, at his first, when he was ordained a priest, at his first mass, he saw a vision, an angel, with a red and a blue cross on his breast, he was wearing white, and at his feet were one black slave and one white slave, and he was releasing them from their chains, and he didn't know, St. John didn't, what this was all about, but he thought maybe God wanted something special from him. So he went to see a hermit, like yesterday, St. John, remember he went to see Marinos? Well, he went to see a hermit. This hermit wasn't nearly so strict. And um, he was called St. Felix of Valois. And they used to pray together and talk about holy things sometime, but most of the other time, they were all by themselves with God. And he had a vision, the other hermit did too, very much like the same vision that our saint today had. And so they went to see the Pope about it, and the Pope had the same vision, only he had his in a dream at night. And then they decided that was the will of God for them to start a religious order to ransom, that means to buy back the poor Christians that had been enslaved by the Muslims in Northern Africa. It was a terrible problem and still is today over many, many centuries. Well, how are they gonna get lots of money to do something good? Often it seems in life you do need lots of money. They prayed to the Blessed Mother under a special title, Our Lady of Remedies. And Our Lady gave the remedy. Pretty soon they had bags full of money, all they needed to get going, about going down to Africa and buying Christian slaves their freedom again. So they wouldn't be tempted to give up their faith, most of all, <coughs> sometimes happened. And they made a vow that if they ran out of money, if Our Lady wasn't giving them quite enough, that they would give themselves to take the place of a slave so they could be free. And that's what changed the course of history at that time. It made such an impression. That's what really conquered that Christian charity, that conquered the Muslims more than anything else in the way of dueling or weapons or any of those things. Well, remember, children, you are noble. You are, you are. At baptism, but especially at confirmation, you share in the kingship of Christ, and you are meant to duel, do battle with the devil in your own soul, as well as in the outside world. And a nobleman, what's his first duty? Is never think of himself, but always think of others first. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.